Are you ready to learn to get rid of stress in your life? To learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil that causes strokes, heart attacks, bad health, and even weight gain? Life-changing habits for work, family, and everyone you deal with start here with Andrew Whitman. It's time to get warrior tough. Here's Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. All right, welcome to Get Warrior Tough, the most monumental hour in media anywhere, and we're not kidding when we say it. We're your leadership and mental toughness coaches, Andrew Whitman and the Dutch Coleman. Hey, 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 hey. What's happening, everyone? All right, if you want to join the conversation, you can give us a call live at 855-856-1380. That's 855-856-1380. On the Twitter Use the hashtag Get Warrior Tough. You can find Dutch at the Dutch Coleman. I'm at Warrior Tough PhD. Go to our website, GetWarriorTough.com. Right, find a handle, hook in, subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, all that stuff. Find Dutch and I on LinkedIn. We're happy to connect because that's what we love doing, right, Dutch? Yes, sir. All right, so um, this has been another uh, a great week. So uh, I had an article, a byline. I told you that was in Entrepreneur last week. It got picked up. Um, by Fox News, and there was another one in Business Insider this week. So Business Insider, I think that the title of that article is um, uh, "Train How to Train Yourself to Be Mentally Tough or something like that, Training Yourself to Be Mentally Tough. So uh, go check it out. Uh, pretty excited. I'm getting a text saying that we got dead air. There's nothing going out. Can you check on you're that? You're not dead. You're on. You're oh, good. We're on. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So um, Dutch, uh, you and I, um, we've we've had some folks – not just you, but me, and on the Twitter, on the social media, on some Facebook, some conversations that we had, and people kind of have like they're kind of taking what we're saying and they're they're morphing it to something different. And so you and I have been having this conversation about what we do is we are under complete control, and we're talking about controlling your emotions, being CEO of you, that your mind would run the boardroom, not your emotions, not your body, right? That and you would get all three to work in concert together for your betterment, not your detriment. Some people have been taking that and saying instead of controlling your emotions, they've been saying stuff like concealing your emotions or hiding them. Yeah, and, and the thing that people have to do is that they have to only focus on what we're saying. When, when we say things, you can't attach it to anything that you used to know, that you learned prior to, or that, that's a, a popular content, stuff that the average person believes because you know what we feel about how we feel about the average mindset. So you have to take what we what we have and you have to focus just on that. Don't combine it with what, you know, mom and them taught you. You know, don't combine it with what your boy said. What don't you combine think it you with, know. With, yeah, well, uh, none of that stuff. You know, take what we say, you know, as we say it literally. We mean it literally unless we're telling you it's figuratively. We mean it literally. So when we say when we make a statement, take it as that. And if you have a question, feel free to call us, email us, reach out to us, and we'll clear it up. But do not combine it with any average speak. We do, we do not go there. Right. And, and, and it's really, it's how, okay, so here's an average mind. We, we know all these, here's these average minded, what we call autopilot meta programs that we pick them up from our mom and dad and our, maybe our brothers and sisters, our friends, the neighbors, the kids at school when we were growing up, the teachers even, coaches, ministers. Right. And so we, and, and when I say them, people can automatically answer them. Like if I said a penny saved is a penny earned. Right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Never let them see you sweat. Oh, okay. So let's take that one right there. So that was kind of the setup. But that's the, that's the pervasive thoughts. Never let them see you sweat. That's average minded nonsense. Absolutely. Never let them see you sweat, which means you're still sweating. You're just not letting anybody see you sweat when the what we teach is, hey, man, don't sweat. What are you sweating for? <laughs> right. I'm actually you know, not sweating, not trying to hide it from anybody. I'm actually under control. And when you, when you put into play the tools and the skills that we're providing you, you aren't sweating because you've done the prerequisite things to take you down a path of, of uh, preparedness, of confidence, of everything you needed. You have a plan. You have a target. So all these things are the reason you're not sweating. The reason other people are sweating or trying to keep you from knowing that they're sweating is because they haven't done the work. They haven't uh, prepared themselves for this journey with a target, with a vision. They haven't identified who they are. So all these reasons are the reasons that they're sweating. And then they're being told not to let you see them sweat. How about don't sweat it? Don't sweat Okay, so this goes directly to you, and if you've listened to the show any or you've listened to any of the stuff that Dutch and I 
teach, if you know, you've been around us in any of our seminars, if you listen to any of our audio, if you're, you read uh, the book, Ground Zero Leadership, CEO of You, any of these things, you've heard Dutch and I talk about this, right? That there is, we, we live three lives. We live a public life, we live a private life, and then we live a secret life. The secret life is your thoughts. It's how you talk to yourself. It's the thoughts that you think. Privately is what you do behind closed doors or people, and then publicly, right, and that's where this never let them see you sweat is you're trying to manage your public life. And this is the mistake that average-minded people do, really a lot, a lot of people. And I mean, the vast majority, probably 99%. I, I, the studies, you know, looking at just uh, how people are motivated and stuff, they say 95%, but I think it's higher than that. Um, where most folks, the vast majority, up to 99%, I don't have the number 99, I got the number 95, but, but I believe it's 99, just to clear that up. That's my truth. Most everyone are, are managing their reputation. They're managing their public life. They put on a face in public. And we act a different way in public than we do in private, and then we act a different way when we're just alone with our thoughts inside of our head. And see, what we teach, Dutch, is that you get your secret life in order and then push your airspace out. Uh, most people try to put a facade of their public life, and then inside, it's all literally cancerous. Absolutely. And we're problem solvers. We don't push problems to the side. And when you push problems to the side, guess what? They're still there. The pain is still there. The, the result of the problems are still there when you just push them aside, when you ignore them, when you hide them, when you don't let them see you sweat. It's still there. It's just no one, you're, you're ignoring it, and you're not letting anyone know it's there when it's eating you up from the inside out. We don't approve of that. We don't teach that. You got to not sweat. Right. At so all. right, and so we got to fix it from the inside, then push our airspace out. So we're under complete control, not the opposite. So it's listen. This is what society does. We teach um, from the time we're little kids that we act a certain way in public. That behavior, public behavior, is not appropriate when you're in public. That you have to like even like so we're talking about sweating, putting on deodorant instead of having good hygiene. I'll just put on some of that body spray. It'll be good. So now you're just cover, trying to cover up stuff. You know, you mentioned last week about you know, wearing baggier clothes, right? So, and that's why, mm -hmm. I mean, I make that joke all the time because people, I wear a blazer a lot. You know, even when it's hot out, I'm wearing a sport coat. People, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, a sport jacket will hide a multitude of sins or at least a bunch of Krispy Kremes anyway. <laughs> <Right? laughs> what is it? What is it? What's the saying? If you wear um, stripes, it makes you look thin or yeah. thinner? I get, and black is slimming, so I'm always, I like yeah, Johnny Cash, is. man. I'm wearing, I like dark colors, right? So, right, right, all these tricks and stuff, we're always working. And listen, I'm not telling you not to worry about or not to present a good uh, image, not to be professional. I'm not telling you that, right? What we're saying is it should start from the very inside at ground zero, and you push it out, and it should be your countenance and how you look and how your appearance is should be a byproduct of who you are, not what you want people to see. Absolutely. And, and even, even broader than that, solve a problem. Solve it. Deal with it. You know, face it. You know, break down, break down the problem, get some resources, get some solutions, get some help, get this, solve that problem. We have so many problems that we never actually address, either because we're afraid, we don't have the uh, resources, which we can, we can uh, seek the resources and or solve a problem. we don't want to deal with it. This is really what it is. This is why conflicts happen. I see this all the time with, you know, kids um, as they're going through the teenage years. Parents, they don't even want to deal with stuff. They don't want to have the conversation. Listen, I have very frank conversations with all my kids. They... The, the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude and approach towards the problem, Captain mm -hmm. Jack Sparrow. I have to give him credit because that's what Absolutely. it was. Absolutely. But that's what it is. So we, we, we just want to put our head in the sand. This is what happened and if you're not a sports fan or you know, if you're an academic fan, but that's what happened at Baylor. They put their head in the sand. They didn't want to discuss the problem. No, that couldn't happen around here. We just won't even talk about it. Right? So uh, it, it's the same thing of like, you know, teaching your kids. Like I don't want them learning about sex on the street. From, you know, and all the rumors and all the junk. If something happens, that we have to have a frank, honest discussion about it, right, in the confines of the house. I don't want them learning about drugs and alcohol from the street because I don't want to talk about it because, ooh, right? I don't want to, you know, Absolutely. all these honest assessments, right? I mean, we just have to take an objective reality. This is mental toughness. So I'm going to hit the problem head on because if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, you know, identify the problem and not afraid to talk about the problem and you just hit it head on, then you can solve it. Until then, Absolutely. it ain't getting solved.
It ain't getting solved. I mean, if, if some, something's bleeding, you have to stop the bleeding. A lot of times people stick a Band-Aid on something without stopping the bleeding. Look, ask for help. Elite warriors aren't afraid to ask for help because they're surrounded by other elite warriors. So they have resources. You know, that one, of, one of the major things we have to do is we have to get out of our own way. That's why we start out with CEO of you. You are, you are in control of that. So you are the main reason that you're having these issues, not your coworkers, right. not your spouse, mm. not your friends. It starts with you. And once we get you out of your own way and, and, and gain a basic understanding, when I say basic understanding, that's why we start off with CEO of you. You're going to get that one day. When you get that CEO of you and why we do it that way, you, it's going to be that aha moment because you're going to understand and realize you control everything. You are in charge. Nobody's the boss of you. And the moment that you truly grasp that, your life will change. Right. But most people would, uh, they really don't want to take the responsibility of being in charge for themselves. This is what we had, uh, one guy said that, it, you know, these mental toughness articles have been going out. And one of the comments we got was, oh, it must be tiring to try and, you know, put that on, to be that tough for years. It'd be tough. I'm like, no, it's so energizing. It's, yeah. What do you say? It's after years of it, it gets tiring. Yeah. After years of that toughness, it gets tiring. <laughs> no. It's more energizing because I'm in complete control. I'm the problem, but I'm the solution, and I can solve every problem that comes my way. It's very energizing. What's tiring is when you're on the rat wheel, and you never get anywhere in life, and you're just trying to keep your head above water, treading water, but never going anywhere. And it's just you're just trying to survive, and surviving is not living. It's not thriving. What we teach, it's living and thriving. It's life more abundantly. Absolutely. When you are tired, it's because you're tired of hiding it. You're tired of concealing it. You're tired of continuing the facade, right. telling the lies to protect the truth. Yeah. That's tiring. Yeah, that fake toughness is tiring, man. When you're putting out, you're trying to put up a show, that's tiring. It is. That'll wear you out, man. I'm taking it, and I'm getting done with it, and I'm throwing the, resi the residue in the trash, and I'm moving on to the next thing. So it doesn't tire me. I move on to the next thing, and that's what we're encouraging you to do. And that's what we can teach you to do. Right. So maintaining, trying to maintain that public life without dealing with you and building a solid secret life. We talked about that last week. You got to have a plan. You got to build a great life. It doesn't just happen. You got to build a great secret life. It doesn't just happen. And the public life would be a pro byproduct of a great secret life. Stop trying to whitewash, hmm, whitewash and purdy up. What's that? Lips, you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig, right? Stop trying, to, you know, stop trying to party up your public life without dealing with the secret life. And I tell you what, if you truly want to get out of that and, and, and stop struggling with that, reach out to us, www.getwarriortough.com. We have the solution. We have a plan. We have the program. We have the curriculum. Whether it's you, whether it's a family member, whether it's a group, whether it's an organization, whether you're in executive leadership, management, however you want to uh, phrase it, we can help you, but you have to let us know. Yeah, well, I mean, we're out there beating down the doors with this stuff, but I, you know, Dutch will never run out, will never run out of problems to solve. We'll never be out of work, you and I, as long as there's people on the planet. And I tell you, it's getting worse, not better, if you look at uh, the way society is moving. We're not, we're, we're not teaching mental toughness we're, all, we're actually teaching mental softness 30 seconds uh, it's just it's mind boggling to me that we continue to you know let this thing spiral out of control dutch we're up on a break when we get back i want to go over some of the science behind this of hiding the emotions and how it really is bad you're listening to the get warrior tough radio show with andrew whitman and the dutch coleman <laughs> 